Also with us is Chris Heise, Chief Investment Strategist at U.S. Trust Company of New York. Chris, let's uh, start things with you. We talked to Professor Siegel. He's very upbeat about the market outlook, looking for maybe another 10 to 15 percent gain in the equity markets. Do you share his enthusiasm? Oh, we certainly do. I mean, the enthusiasm has been there for the better part of the past year or so. We felt as though this, this recovery would become a positive feedback loop instead of living in that negative feedback loop world that we were in. With the swing factor being jobs, um, we saw it this past month. We we're going to see an even better month in April and May and June. And when we look back on this, this could potentially be called the recovery that no one believed. Uh, they'll start believing it in the summer. And by that time, uh, we expect the equity markets to be another 5% higher. And by the end of the year, close to 1,300, if not at 1,300. Is labor the one place where you disagree with the Fed? Uh, because the minutes today came out and said, you know, the labor market is one of the concerns, tight credit another one of the concerns, as far as uh, why they see this recovery really being measured rather than robust. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the difference here is the trend versus the actual numbers. Now, we would all like to see a lower unemployment rate already uh, this far into the recovery. But the reality is this trend is growing very, very quickly. And by the summer months, and even by the end of the year, you're likely to see a nine handle, maybe 8.9% on unemployment. And although that's not low, as much as uh, we would like it to be, it's certainly a step in the right direction and better than the consensus actually believes. What about the concerns uh, on the credit front? I mean, uh, tight credit and maybe for good reason here, consumers haven't deleveraged enough. We hear that from uh, the White House. We hear that from the Fed. Is that a concern for you as well? Uh, it is a concern. It's a concern really as to how fast we would like them to delever. Uh, we don't want them to delever too quickly, uh, which would curtail growth uh, much more than expected. We still see 4% growth in GDP for this year, which is about a percent above uh, the consensus. But the deleveraging aspect, the quickness in terms of repairing their balance sheet, is happening quicker than, than anyone really expected. And you can see that being picked up in pending home sales as well as auto sales. Those are the two areas that were hurt the most, and they're starting to turn around. They had that J-curve effect. And as we get through these summer months and people become more comfortable in the job prospects, consumer spending should start to rise even faster than we've already seen. Michael, well, guys, uh, it's Julie here. Chris, I want to bring the minutes back into this, the Fed minutes that we got today. You heard Mike mention the fourth quarter. One of the things the traders have been looking for in the fourth quarter was perhaps a rate increase. Now, looking at the language in the minutes today, do you think that's still in the cards? Because the Fed is seems more concerned about maybe inflation not being a threat at all. Yeah, there's, there's no question about it. I think the Fed right now is clearly looking at the inflation front, the inflation expectations front, and they're suggesting that this prolonged period is going to be extended even, even farther than what the actual market participants believe. I think the best thing to point to is if you start to see this job growth up, pick up very significant steam by the summer months, you'll start to see the futures markets correct for that, and you'll see the Fed tighten sooner rather than later. All right, everybody. So, Chris, you are upbeat here. You know, our earlier guest, Jeremy Siegel, also upbeat. What derails everything, in your view, potentially? Well, uh, clearly, an earnings, a very large earnings miss, which we think is an extremely low probability. Right now, we still have a huge gap between industrial production and new orders that are coming in. I mean, right now, inventories are dropping. Inventories are dropping because orders are coming in faster than you can actually increase production, which means jobs are going to come on steam. If we're wrong there and jobs actually don't come on as fast as we expect and you get an earnings miss, that derails the market. But there's been so much flow into fixed income and cash mm -hmm. that this pull back that can happen, whether it's the Fed tightens sooner rather than later or there's an earnings miss, is not going to be your proverbial large pullback that everyone's waiting for because precisely they're all waiting for it. So we think investors are behind the curve, so is the consensus, so any pullback is going to be short and shallow, and we would consistently be buying into equities at this point through into well into next year. I mean, if anything, in your view, then err on the side of, because there is so much money on the sidelines already, that likelihood, the, the, it's to the upside, the gains here. Uh, that's absolutely right. I mean, $80 in earnings on the S&P, uh, almost uh, uh, $78 already are just about baked into the cake. Uh, so if you look at $80, that could be low. Now, consensus is somewhere in the low 70s, maybe mid-70s at most. We're at 80, uh, and we think uh, 80 could be low. $90 next year, that, that begets a market with a flat multiple. It's 1300 by the end of the year mm -hmm. and 1500 by the end of 2011. I wonder about, you know what, we used to talk so much about the new normal, and one huge component of that was uh, the tax regime that we're, that we're looking into, that we're headed into here, and see, seems to have been dropped by the wayside. Are you concerned about that, Chris? I mean, are you concerned about tax hikes that we run into over the next couple of years? Yeah, no, no question about it. We have all these dragons out there. Our recent report is called Enter the Dragons, Embrace the Bull Moose, precisely because tax worries, fiscal policy worries, sovereign worries, uh, geopolitical risk, you name it, uh, there's a huge wall of worry. Uh, you mentioned 
mention taxes. I think it knocks off uh, maybe a half a percent of GDP starting in 2013 when some of the health care bill tax starts to hit in there. Up until that point, some of it, uh, the bump up is not large enough to derail this recovery. And we don't think this, this recovery is one of those shallow ones. We think it's actually pretty powerful. And at the same time, uh, when you take a look at earnings, earnings in the S&P are more dominated today by manufacturing companies, energy companies, technology companies, industrial companies, not necessarily the consumer, which dominates GDP growth. So you can get that new normal GDP growth environment, right. but you get a powerful earn earnings engine. Hey. Uh, let me ask you guys about concerns that, that we had overseas, and they kind of uh, were risen afresh this morning. I mean, as far as the Greece situation, as far as the sovereign situation in general, uh, do you feel like that's okay, Europe has a safety net un under it, and it's priced into the markets? And Chris, let me start with you. Yeah, I, I think at this point, the best way to take a look at whether or not you're okay with what's going on there and its impact on credit markets in general is to take a look at, again, at the insurance cost on the debt and to take a look whether or not that that has blown out across uh, the entire credit spectrum. Credit default swaps within Europe and Southern Europe and spe uh, specifically actually started to widen out aggressively a month ago when the Greece situation started to pop up. Uh, and then obviously Portugal and some of the other countries. That was well contained. Now, is that good news? Absolutely, it's good news. And and it'll get picked up everywhere else if it's becoming a contagion type of uh, facet, which is very different this year than where we were last year or the year before that. So that lends itself to better functioning credit markets in general and All also right. complacency. Complacency is more or less in the recovery mm -hmm. rather than in the functioning of the credit markets, which, again, is a great sign. All right, we're going to have to let Chris have the last point. Michael, we appreciate the, all your time today. Michael Gurka of Neural Markets, also Chris Heisey from the U.S. Trust Company of New York.